Hello everybody! Welcome to another video from Code Shorts with Profanis. I'm very excited about the Angular 16 features and I couldn't wait for the official release, so I decided to create a video and share with you what's new in Angular 16 and this has to do with the signals. And please know that currently the signals are in a developer preview, which means that the API that we will see in the next couple of minutes might be changed when we are going to have an official release. Without any further delay, let's start with a bit of theory and then we will see an example. The signals are based on the observer design pattern, where in this pattern we have two actors, we have the observers and then we have the subject. The subject maintains a list of the observers and an observer becomes, well, an observer when has been subscribed to that particular subject. When the subject has something new, a value, then this value is emitted to the subscribed observers. And if one of those observers don't go on to receive any update from that particular subject, then it has just to unsubscribe. But wait a minute, don't we already have this observer design pattern in RxJS? Yes, that's true. The signals is the new reactive primitive in the Angular framework and will offer many advantages. One of them is that we won't have to explicitly subscribe to a subject nor to unsubscribe. It will also allow us to focus more on writing declarative code and last and definitely not least, will change the way the change detection works. As of today, we have the component tree and the change detection is based on the zone JS. Let's say that we have a change in a component of that tree. A change could be an event, a set timeout, an HTTP call, or even if we change the data that are bound to the HTML template, then Angular will run by default a change detection in that tree and all the components will change. And as said, this is the by default implementation. And of course, then we'll have the on push, but this video is not aiming to giving details more on how the change detection currently works in Angular. So what is the change with the signals? The change with the signals will offer a more fine grained change detection, which means that the update will happen only on the parts of the component that should be updated. This will be a great improvement in terms of performance. As said on the beginning, the current API is just a developer preview, but in any case, let's see what we currently have. Well, we have the signal, which is a primitive type where we can get and set a value. Then we can have a computed, which returns a signal, which derives from our expression. And we can also have an effect which execute a lambda function when a signal changes a value. And also we have the mutate and the state values are preserved and we have to mutate only the provided ones. And we also have the update method which updates the state with a given one. So let's now see an example and understand how this works. This will be a very easy example to see and all we have is just an increase and a decrease button where the increase increases a counter and the decrease decreases the counter. The current implementation is based on subjects and here I have a state, which is just a behavior subject. This is my type, this is just a counter of type number and my default value is to have a zero value into the counter. Then I have a counter observable, which is just my counter. I'm providing here the map and then I go on just to expose my counter. Into the constructor, I then have my counter, which is this guy. I'm subscribing and on every change that I'm going to have into the counter, I go on just to run console log signal one and then the data. And into these methods, into the increase and decrease, what I'm doing is that I'm using the next method where into my state, which is my behavior subject and I'm providing the counter and of course I'm increasing and I'm decreasing the counter. So let's now try to create the same one, but this time using signals. 
I will start from top to bottom. And I will start from the state. And I will say that the, my state equals to a signal. Then I have to provide this a generic type and I have to provide my type. And my type is the same as we can see here. So let me copy this and paste it into the generic type. And then I have to provide the initial value. And my initial value, again, is similar on what we have into the behavior subject. Just my counter with the default value of zero. And then I want to create my counter. If you remember, we have also a method which calls computed. And this is what I'm going to use here. I'm going to have my computed. And into my arrow function, I have to provide my expression. And my expression will be this dot state. I'm going to start using this one, this guy. And from the state, and actually this is a function, I'm going to use my counter. So now I know that the counter is derived from this computed expression. And how about now this guy? Here we have the subscribe. In this case, we have to use our effect. And the effect, the lambda function, this, this one, will run whenever we have any change on, let's start typing. So I will have here my console log, and I will type here. You know what? Let me copy this and paste it here. Let's also import this update import from Angular Core. And instead of data, I want here to have my counter. And again, this is a function. And just to have different messages, I will have here a subject. And I will have here just my signal. And you know what? I don't need to have signal here and signal there. So I said previously, the effect will run whenever this guy, the counter, has a new value. And as I said here, we do not have to subscribe or unsubscribe. Everything happens behind the scenes for us. Now let's go into the increase and decrease. For this method, we have to mutate or we have to update our state. And I'm going to go into my state and use the method mutate. And what kind of mutation do you want to have here? So let's see. I want my data counter to equals my data counter plus one. And let's copy this and paste it here. And I want just to decrease this value. This state mutate. And as said, this is going to mutate my state by this property. So let's now go to the HTML to see what kind of changes we have to do there. Here we have our subject and then we have the counter dollar, which is our observable. And of course, we have to use the sync pipe to subscribe and auto unsubscribe. And then into the signal, we have to use our counter. And of course, we need also to have here our interpolation and counter, this is just a function. This is just a function which is derived. Actually, this is a signal which is derived from these expressions, like we said previously, and we have to use it like this, which is our getter. And immediately we might be wondering, isn't this an anti pattern in Angular? Well, it used to be an anti pattern, but now with signals, things will change a lot. Now let's go to the browser to see what we have and open also the developer tools. If I increase the value, here we can say that we have the subject one with this value and the signal with this value. And then if I continue increasing, it seems that everything are in sync. So this is a very easy example that we have seen, just a counter where we increase the value and we decrease the value. The goal of that video was to give an idea of what the signals are and also to see what currently in the developer preview, what kind of API we have. You might be wondering how about the RxJS? Is this a past? 
Well, no, this is not the past. And the Angular team had made sure to have an interoperability with RxJS, meaning that perhaps in the next versions, we'll have some methods to create an observable from a signal, and we will also have a method to create a signal from observable. So that was it. I think that I forgot something. Here we are subscribing to the counter, which is the behavior subject. And let me also add here just a to do to unsubscribe. Luckily, with signals, we won't have these kind of issues and we won't have to worry about unsubscribing or subscribing because this is happening automatically. So that was it. If you like my content, please subscribe and click the ring bell and see you in the next video.